This was the world's first operational aircraft to ever be designed with stealth anti-radar technology. Tested in utmost secrecy at the infamous Area 51, it was thought to be undetectable. Yet, despite its near invisibility, a Soviet missile shot it down. But how could this happen with all its stealth technology? This is the comprehensive story of one of the most pioneering aircraft in aviation history, the Lockheed Martin F-117 Nighthawk. In the 1960s, physicist and mathematician Pyotr Ufimtsev began developing a high-frequency asymptotic theory to predict the scattering of electromagnetic waves from two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects. The results of these studies were made public in 1962 when Ufimtsev published an extremely complex theoretical paper related to radar wave physics. This work demonstrated that the wavelength of radar waves reflected by an object was not related to its size, but to the configuration of the angles and the shape of its leading and trailing edges. The study showed that a large aircraft could theoretically deflect radar waves away, rendering it invisible. Although the research was revolutionary and promising, the Soviets considered it to have no military or economic value and granted permission to publish it internationally, where it caught the attention of Dennis Overholzer, an American engineer working in Lockheed Martin's Secret Projects Division. Upon reading the research, Dennis quickly realized that all the tools and a new theoretical mathematical base were ready for stealth technology to make a significant leap. However, in the 1960s, there were no powerful computers to apply the complex mathematical formulas to the design of an aircraft, forcing Lockheed Martin engineers to wait until the early 70s. During that time, thanks to significant technological advancements, especially the emergence of the first supercomputers, it became possible to apply the complex mathematical formulas to aircraft design. The problem was that the aircraft design would be very non-aerodynamic, making the flight quite unstable and dangerous. The F-117 was conceived and built from an electrical engineering perspective rather than traditional aerodynamics, with its angles and shapes designed to reflect radar waves away, reducing its visibility by over 99%. The Lockheed Martin F-117 Nighthawk has a length of 65 feet 7 inches, a wingspan of 43 feet 4 inches with a wing sweep angle of 67 degrees, a height of 12 feet 2 inches, and a weight of 29,507 pounds empty and 52,471 pounds fully loaded. Most of its structure is made of aluminum, but some parts, such as the engines and exhaust outlets, are made of titanium obtained from the Soviets through various front companies. The aircraft's exterior is covered with a black, radar-absorbing material, known by the acronym RAM, consisting of magnetic sphere particles embedded in a high dielectric polymer matrix. Other compositions include carbon atoms and non-magnetic materials, but the exact composition of the F-117's coating remains a secret. One significant factor that increases an aircraft's radar visibility is the vertical stabilizer, due to its location and position. Therefore, instead of a vertical stabilizer like most aircrafts, the F-117 has a V-tail with specially defined angles to obstruct radar wave returns in the engine and aircraft areas. The most efficient method to reduce radar signature is to avoid a vertical stabilizer, as done with the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, considered the world's most expensive aircraft. We also have a video about how the B-2 Spirit can fly in a stable manner without any type of vertical stabilizer. Link in the description. Unlike normal jet aircraft with circular exhaust outlets, the F-117 has rectangular outlets that disperse heat over a larger area, making it difficult to be detected by infrared sensors. This area received special attention and was coated with absorbing material to confine radar waves inside, dissipating their energy. The F-117 was tested at the secretive and famous Area 51 in the Nevada desert, where all the flight tests were always made in great secrecy. The first flight of the first prototype took place in 1978. In the early flights of the prototypes, designed to test the aircraft's aerodynamics, it was found that the aircraft was very unstable on its three main axes, making it extremely complex to stabilize. The quadruple redundancy of the fly-by-wire flight control system managed all flight dynamics, including all necessary corrections to maintain stable flight. 
Due to this instability during flight, many early test prototypes crashed. In 1981, a decision was made for mass production after it was discovered that the project worked and the aircraft had an incredibly low radar signature. The first fully operational aircraft was ready in 1982 and was secretly delivered to the United States Air Force that same year, with all flights conducted at night under great secrecy and each flight classified as top secret. Interestingly, during this period, there was a significant increase in UFO sightings in Nevada with many people claiming to see strangely shaped objects flying over the desert at night from 1982 until 1988, when the aircraft became operational. The United States Air Force always denied the aircraft's existence until mid-1988, when it was officially presented to the public. Before each mission, mission data is downloaded to the flight control computers that are integrated with the flight control surfaces and navigation system to provide a fully autonomous flight to the target. The F-117 is equipped with two General Electric F-404 turbo engines without afterburners that propel the aircraft to a maximum speed of 683 miles per hour, which is about 89% of the speed of sound, making it a subsonic aircraft. It has a range of 1,068 miles when fully fueled, but since it can be refueled while flying, it can go anywhere in the globe in one single flight. The main measure of an object's radar visibility is called the radar cross-section, RCS, a measure of how detectable an object is. The larger the RCS, the more easily the object can be detected. RCS is influenced by various factors, such as the object's material, size, the angle at which the radar beam hits the object, the angle at which the beams leave the object, the distance between the emitting source and the object, the strength of the emitting source, among many other aspects. For example, a person typically has an RCS of 10.76 square feet. A cargo ship typically has an RCS ranging from 107,000 square feet to 860,000 square feet. An airliner like the Boeing 747 has an RCS of 1,076 square feet. A small bird has an RCS of 15.5 square inches, and the F-117 has an astonishing RCS of 1.55 square inches. In theory, a radar operator cannot distinguish between an F-117 and a small bird. However, as mentioned earlier, the RCS varies depending on the angle at which radar waves hit the object. So, this value of 1.55 square inches is only achieved when radar waves hit from certain angles. At other angles, the exact index varies greatly, and the value can be much higher. But the F-117 has more than one factor in its favor. Objects with very small RCS are simply ignored by radar software, since very small RCS values are caused by raindrops, small birds, atmospheric disturbances, or even small airborne particles. Therefore, radar software simply ignores such disturbances. This makes the F-117 practically invisible to monostatic radars, where the emitter and receiver are in the same antenna. But it is much more visible to bi-static and multi-static radars, where the emitter and receiver are not in the same antenna, usually separated by short distances, with these signals being combined and processed together. Any stealth aircraft becomes fully visible when a door or hatch is opened. This was the case on March 27, 1999, during an attack mission against targets in the former Yugoslavia, when an F-117 was shot down by a Soviet-made S-125 Neva missile. The Serbs discovered that when the F-117 opened the bomb bay doors just before the attack, its radar signature increased significantly, allowing them to see and target it. The Serbs launched two missiles. The first missed the aircraft, but the second collided near the F-117, hitting it with several fragments that damaged the flight controls, forcing the pilot to eject. The aircraft hit the ground shortly after, and its structure remained relatively intact, later being handed over to the Russians. Interestingly, 
A few years later, the F-117 pilot and the Serbian missile operator became friends. After this incident, the F-117's door profiles were modified to prevent other aircraft from being shot down using this technique. A total of 64 F-117 units were built, 59 production versions, and five prototypes. Each aircraft cost $42 million, and it is estimated that the aircraft development program cost $5 billion. The aircraft continued to be widely used, but in 2005 its use was limited to very specific missions, and in 2006 it was retired, mainly due to the emergence of the F-22, which is much more aerodynamic and much more stealthy. The F-22 has an RCS of about 0.155 square inches, making it the size of a B on a radar screen. This is thanks to advances in electronics, material science, fluid dynamics, and especially the advancement of supercomputers. But the foundational ideas that made all of this possible were tested and developed on the F-117, which makes it a very important and unique aircraft in aviation history. There are many other interesting characteristics of the F-117 Nighthawk, such as the special screws that, if tightened too much, would increase the aircraft's RCS the retractable antennas, the excessive landing speed requiring a parachute, the pilot's helmet reflection which could increase detection, the landing gear doors and access panels with serrated edges that needed to fit perfectly when closed, and many other aspects. But it would be impossible to cover absolutely everything about this complex aircraft in one single video. If you enjoyed this type of content, consider becoming a channel member. Starting at only $2.99 a month, you can get early and ad-free video access, exclusive wallpapers, and a lot more benefits on higher categories. Choose the member category by clicking the join button below or via our Patreon. Thank you for watching.